Well, welcome everybody to week two of the November online program for the alumni of the Sunshine Coast Health Center here in beautiful Powell River, British Columbia. And this month, uh, we're taking a step back and reflecting on the major themes for the past two years of the online program. Last week, we talked about this concept of being true to yourself or recognizing that you are the author of your life. And this week, uh, well, we're going to screw you up on uh, week one. And because that's basically in life, even though you are the author of your life, that definitely doesn't mean you get to do anything you feel like doing. Everybody's got to live with things that happen in the real world. If you decide to go, uh, well, you're being true to yourself and you really want to drive your car at a 240 kilometers an hour down the road, very likely um, the police are going to pull you over. And they're going to say, please don't do that. And if you do it enough times, they'll throw you in jail, right? So there are rules to the game. You don't get to decide a lot of what these rules are, right? There's things like schools, there's things like... Uh, what do you need to do to do this job? Maybe you have, they want this certificate. Well, you can say, well, I already know how to do the job. Well, it doesn't matter. You know, we need the certificate. In families, uh, one of the big, uh, 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 the big struggles with our clients is recognizing that they don't get to do everything they want to do in their families. In partnerships, I mean, you have to recognize it takes two to tango. You're only 50% of the equation, right? And your partner very likely thinks differently than you do and has a, interprets things differently than you do. And this is all part of reality. All of us have to face this. I, mean, I remember uh, when I was uh, working in Lower Mainland, this poor fellow, uh, he was driving a garbage truck and he's married with three kids. And he couldn't, uh, the, uh, the back of his truck st stuck up and I guess he wasn't aware of this and he went past this bypass and actually bypass hit the back of the truck, he got smuck, he died. Like, strange things happen all the time, right? It's this concept that's actually, uh, it's been around about 2,100 years or so. The old Greek guy said, basically, bad stuff happens to everybody. And this is, this is true of life. And even to the, uh, to the fact that if you are alive, then part of the rules of the game are, in fact, you're gonna die. We're all mortal. Huh? Ever wonder why uh, the average age coming into a treatment center is yeah, mid to late 30s? Well, the reason is that's the midlife crisis. And people are beginning to recognize that, oh my God, I'm going to die. So it's not like you're 20 years old anymore, that reality is coming in, reality is setting home. For some people, the reality sets home in some very serious ways. And when people are given diagnoses of cancer and stuff like that. But anyway, the point of this exercise is, even though you get to choose what you do in life, you have to pay attention to what the world, what goes on in the world, that it may not exactly agree with what you happen to do. I would love to be a millionaire, but I don't think that's ever gonna happen. I would uh, love to have uh, all sorts of things in my life, but I have to be realistic about it. All of these things are part of what it means to be human. Right? So the trick then, on how you can live this life is to start, uh, Viktor Frankl's point, right? Start wandering around the world asking, well, what does life demand of me? So you've probably heard that a few times in our online program. What does, what does this big world out there demand of me? Now, if you're in the 12 step program, their version of that is live life on life's terms, right? So it works for 12 steps and for psychology, whichever you like. But it's this concept of going with the flow of life. Because if you don't, if you don't do that, if you just say, well, I'm going to be true to myself and screw it, I want some money and there's a bank and go rob the bank. 
uh, reality is going to pop in and sort of interrupt what you want out of life. Right? So the idea is not to butt up against life, but to join with it. And it's one of the great geniuses of this idea of asking what life demands of you. Because if you can get into the flow of life, you're going to get a sense of belonging, you're not going to feel isolated, you're not going to get all bent out of shape when things don't go your way. Your frustration level is going to drop. In fact, you're going to live a lot longer and chances are you're going to have a lot less uh, headaches and stomach aches and certainly a lot less risk of cancer and heart attacks and all those other things that come from stress. So it just makes your life easier and gives you this sense of belonging and uh, you're part of and you're no different than anyone else. Anyway, this concept of being part of, this concept of asking life what it is going to expect and demand from you is really fundamental to happiness. So, at any rate, it's one of those things when you, in your daily life, right, it's uh, when you phone up Revenue Canada because you got a question, you know, be really thankful if someone actually answers the phone in the first five minutes because chances are you're going to be on there for like two hours. If you go to the hospital, what does going to the hospital demand of me? Well, probably going to be sitting in the emergency ward for a few hours. Recovery. What does recovery demand of me? And recognize all these things. Everything you learned while you were uh, at the Sunshine Coast Health Center. And what does living the good life demand of you? How do you do this? How do you achieve this? These are the kinds of things that you start pursuing in recovery. And if you do it, according to our research, then what you will discover is that the, the importance of the drugs and the alcohol will just ease off and a lot of times just dissolve away. I know lots of people with good recovery who have zero interest in doing drugs, zero, because it doesn't offer them anything anymore. What they've got is this feeling of belonging, they feel worthwhile, good self-confidence, everything's going for them. And so there's, there's no real point to the drugs anymore. Anyway, ask life what it demands of you. That was number two. And next week we'll be back uh, with another one.